Hey there, geometry class. This is section 5.1 in your book talking all about perpendicular bisectors and angle bisectors. And I'm trying to keep the videos really short. So the bell's going to ring here in a moment, and I'm going to try to get done before then. The first thing, as you recall, is when you do a uh, bisector of a segment, you actually end up creating a perpendicular bisector. And this may look familiar. Again, I've got a segment here in front of me. I take my compass, I put the point on one end of the segment, and then I, I stretch it out. Let's see if I can do this here. That's going to flip it over there. We go. We're going to go more than halfway, and I make my big arc, like so, right? And then I flip it over to the other end, grab it, and move it over here, and I do the same thing on the other side. Well, what's so cool about this is when you connect these two points right here and right here, Indeed, it makes a 90 degree angle. So not only does it bisect this segment here, right? So you can put little congruent marks because I'm saying from the endpoints to here are congruent, but now you make a perpendicular bisector. And what's so cool about that is now that we've studied triangles, you may recognize that, well, wait a minute. If I connect these two points right here, or really anywhere on this line, doesn't matter, I'm going to connect it right here, for example, and I do the same thing on this side, I have congruent triangles by side, angle, side. And so that means the length from here, from the end point to the perpendicular bisector is the same. So that's your first set of theorems, too, that you're, you're trying to get done by Friday. If you, if you haven't started, play along now. The perpendicular bisector theorem says, if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, it's on this line, then it's equal distant to the endpoints. Well, that's fabulous to know, right? And the converse of that is also true. Well, you don't know if you're on the perpendicular bisector, but if um, a point is equal distant from the endpoints of a segment, then I must be on the perpendicular bisector. All right, so how does this look? Well, let me do one more. And then we'll jump into a couple of problems. So um, another thing you've been doing since the beginning of the year is bisecting angles. And again, the first thing you do when you bisect an angle, you open up your compass, right? You make an, uh, an arc like this. And then you put the point of your compass here and you open it up to the size of, the, of that opening. If I'm going to shrink it up just a little bit like that. And you make a line going out. And then you flip it over, you do the same thing on the other side. Right, so you guys have been doing this since the beginning of the year. Well, now what's so helpful is if, I, if it'll let me do it, it's not letting me do it work. There we go. Now this is going to um, play into triangles because I'm going to be bisecting angles of triangles, I'm going to be bisecting sides of triangles and you're going to get some really cool things. What's the point? Let me move my picture out of the way. Remember, the distance between any um, point and a line, so if I'm saying this point right here, and a line is the uh, perpendicular segment, so it's got to be a 90 degree angle. So right there, and the distance from there to there has got to be 90 degree angles at this point here. What does that mean? Well, those are your next two set of theorems. Angle bisector states, hey, if you're on an angle bisector, then it's equal distant from the sides. The converse of that says, hey, if you've got a point that's equal distant from the sides, then you're on the angle bisector. Well, so what? What does this matter? We'll take a look at the following problem. Here it says, um, hmm, I've got these angle measures. I've got segments that go to the same point and they're equal distance. Oh, that 90 degree angle. That 90 degree angle is really important because it means they're the exact same length. What does that mean? Thanks, Cyrus. It means that those two angles, these angles here, J, K, M, and L, K, M, have to be congruent because you just bisected that angle. You split that angle in half. Well, let's take a look. So what I'm saying when, I, when I'm saying they're bisected, I'm saying they're congruent to each other. If they're congruent to each other, their angle measures are the same. There's the bell. Okay, we're back. Um, so now, solve for your expressions. Subtract 2a from both sides. Uh, subtract a 20 from both. 
and you get A is equal to 6, which means each one of those angles has to be 38 degrees. Now, a little more challenging problem is the following here. And I'm going to go to the board to work on this one. This is write an equation in point slope form for the perpendicular bisector of the segment with endpoints of 6, negative 5, and 10, comma 1. Well, the first thing I need to do is figure out what the slope is. And the easiest way to figure out the slope is what's my rise? Again, I'm always going from left to right. Uh, so I'm starting here and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. My run is 1, 2, 3, 4. So my slope is 6 over 4, which is the same thing as 3 over 2. Okay? Now I need to find the midpoint of that. Well, the easiest way to find the midpoint of that is cut the rise in half and the run in half. What does that mean? Well, let's just take this point here and say, hey, halfway between 6, uh, halfway up 6 is 3, so 1, 2, 3. So it's got to be somewhere up on here. Oh, yeah, and half of 4 is 2. So it's got to be this point right here. So wait a minute. I know my midpoint. My midpoint, and I'll put it in yellow here. It's got to be right there. So my midpoint is 8, negative 2. Well, now all I have to do is put that into an equation. But wait a minute. No, there is something I'm missing. The slope of this line in blue has a slope of 3 over 2. What is the slope of a line perpendicular to it? Well, the answer is you have to take the opposite reciprocal, which is purple. So this 3, 2 is going to become negative 2 over 3. And so now in my equation, I've got negative 2 over 3, x plus b equals y. And then I'm going to substitute that point 8, negative 2, into my equation. All right? So then negative 2 is the y-coordinate, and then I'm going to put an 8 in here, and now I can, um, now I can solve it. All right, let's, uh, okay, I'm going to get some funky fractions here, but that's okay. I get negative 16 over 3 equals negative 2 plus b. I'm trying to solve for b so I can plug it back into my equation. All right, so I'm going to add 16 over 3 to both sides. I know how much you guys love uh, funky fractions, so uh, let's just do it. Uh, 16 over 3 minus 2 is how many thirds? It's 6 thirds. Okay, so that equals B, and this combines to form 10 over 3, which is B. So again, my final equation for this one would be y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 10 over 3. <gasps> oh, horrible, horrible problem, but they don't get any harder than that. And if I want to plot that up here, it doesn't ask me to plot it, but if I wanted to plot it, I could. I could go up here and I could say, all right, well, I'm going to go through this point. I'm going to have a line. It's going to look. Uh, like, we'll, we'll use the yellow. You guys like the yellow, right? It's not going to work for me. Whatever. Don't worry about it. Uh, so this one, I'm going to go down two over three. So I'm going to have another. Oh, hello. So I'm going to have another point right here, and I'm going to draw a line right through that. And that's my line right there. I know that's a very hard problem. I'm sorry about it. It took a little longer than I hoped, but I'm sure you can appreciate it. Hey, nice job. Um, take a break. Take five. I have another lecture for you on 5.2. We're going to hit these two worksheets hard in class and get them done. Good job.